Hello everybody, this is Brother Kingsley. I have a wonderful message for you today. And my message for you today is the worship of Christmas. The worship of Christmas. I believe this message is for you. That you may learn and to know how you ought to worship God in this Christmas period. Even in another period. Amen? Now I want you to see because this have to deal with the Matthew chapter 2. The whole chapter is about Christmas story. About the birth of Jesus Christ. And I want you to see the wise men, they were guided by the star. And I believe this was the first GPS that was introduced to us by God. Way back in Genesis and in, in Exodus, you find that Jesus Christ was that pillar of crowd in the day and the pillar of fire by night. He's the Shekinah glory of God. Well, in the nation of Israel, I believe the same Shekinah glory of God appeared to these wise men and lead them to the place where the baby was born. What a wonderful a wonderful Christmas story. These men were extremely wise. The Bible called them wise men because they sought out to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, let me tell you now. The wisest thing that you ever do at this Christmas or any time is to worship Jesus. Is to worship Jesus Christ. And I hope this did not just fall flat. And I hope you did not miss this. Because my dear friend, this is the bottom of all the bottom lines. The wisest thing that anyone could ever do is same place to worship Jesus Christ. There are people today who want to have the joy of Christmas without worshiping Jesus Christ. It is impossible to enjoy Christmas without worshiping Jesus Christ. You can have so-called good time. Your good time. You are not actually worshiping Jesus Christ. Only until you learn to worship Jesus Christ, then you can know the meaning of Christmas. Amen? Now, it's interesting today because you can see these wise men, in spite of the difficulty in their journey, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, Now, after Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to worship him. From the east, from Babylon, they, they take a difficult journey. What a journey. What a discomfort. What a distance. No plane, no train, no cars, no hotels. They had a hard journey. And still, they came to worship the Lord Jesus. Today, have many people don't even go to the house of the Lord because of rain. You will be amazed. Many people don't go and worship God and they're at home. Because of one reason or another. But look at this man. They were so wise. In spite of the, dis the, dif the distance. In spite of the difficult, inside the, the difficulty and the di discomfort and the danger thereof. Because here is Herod on the other hand. Telling them when you see the Lord. Come and tell me. And I'll come and worship him. You want to worship Jesus Christ with your knife. Herod was a murderer. He killed thousands of innocent baby boys. Because he wanted to murder Jesus Christ. He killed his own sons. He killed his own wives. That's the kind of man that this wise man was dealing with. When they meet Herod. And he said, when you see him, show him, show him, show me the place. And I'll come and worship him. He wants to go and kill our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, now, these people, they sought out to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. In spite of all the difficulty I just mentioned to you. Because Why? They find Jesus Christ to be worthy to be worshipped. You know the word worship is two words. Worship. Does Christ want anything to you? Because if it's everything, if you were to worship, then you worship him at all costs. No excuse not to go to the church to worship him, my dear friend. No excuse. And I pray that God have mercy upon our poor souls. On our weak faith. For not to, not, not to go and worship God. The biggest cult we have here today in UK is the comfort of our home. Just sit down comfortably on the TV and then off you go. That's the biggest cut we have here today, the comfort of our home. And in this message, I want you to see because Jeremiah 29 verse 13 say, when you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. That's what God is saying. When you seek God with, with all your heart, you will find him. The, this message have two points. Number one is how they sought him. Number two, what they brought to him. First point, how they sought him. Second point, what they brought to him. So first of all, I want you to see how they sought our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 says, Now, after Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. So there are three things that help them to find our Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, I say to you today, he's seeking you. Because one of the first things that help them to see Lord Jesus Christ in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit was put in the heart of these wise men for them to seek our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, for a woman flesh, there's nothing good in the flesh. Just Christ said the flesh is weak, but the spirit is winning. Only the spirit is going to win in that you may find God. Only the spirit of God is winning that a man will not perish. But come to war, repentance. Only the Spirit of God. In of our flesh, none of us can see God. In fact, when I was run away from God, God ran faster than me. And that's why I'm here preaching to you. I love what our beloved brother said in First John. In the pieces of John, he said, He first loved us before we love him. God loves us so much that he's seeking you, that you don't want anyone to perish. Amen. So, my dear friend, you can see that the worship was put and planted in the heart of desire of this man. And today, the same way the word of God has been put into your heart, and you want you to seek him today. You can suppress it, you can massage it, but the will of God is there. He doesn't want anyone to perish. God wants everyone to come to repentance. Christ is that true light which gives light to everyone that comes into the world. And I can guarantee you today through the word of God that the Lord Jesus Christ is seeking you. You see, this message that you are hearing right now, that you are watching, I believe it's not incidental as mental. Now that you are watching it, I believe that God is seeking you today through dear Holy Spirit. God is seeking every one of us through his voice. If we are willing and not to suppress it, and then the ministry of the Holy Spirit will be so clear to us and he will say, come to Jesus. Are you willing to do that today? To know what true worship is? To have the wisdom of the Christmas? Is to worship the living God. Amen? Matthew chapter 2 verse 2 to 6. The Bible says, Saying, Where is he who is being born of Jew? For we saw his star, and when it arose and came to a place to worship him, we have come to worship him. Verse 3. And when Herod had this, he was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him, and assembled the sheep priest, and the scribe of the people, he inquired of them where Christ was to be born. That's so strange. Where the Messiah is going to be born. He brings in the priest and the scribe to tell him where he's going to be born. Verse 5, they told him in Bethlehem or Judea. Now, how did they know about that? For it so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rest of Judea, uh, for from you shall come a ruler who is going to shepherd my people Israel. It is very plain. It is very plain. It is very simple. The Bible prophesies in detail the place where the birth of Jesus Christ is going to take place. The, this prophecy, you also in Matthew chapter 5 verse 2, that tells that Jesus Christ will be born in Bethlehem. And Jesus Christ is going to be born the Messiah. And I want to tell you something else. If you want to find Jesus Christ in this Christmas season, not only through the Holy Spirit of God, you can also find him through his word. Open your Bible, read it, and believe it. Because you can see, everything has been written down in the record. That's why the scribes, that's why the priests go find the place they were written. And yet, it's amazing they didn't go down and worship him. There's no record of them going. There's no record of Herod going. And yet they knew. The same way these people... And some people today will miss the first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ because it's been written down clear in the Bible. The same way many people also miss his coming. Everything is being written down clearly in the Bible. It is amazing they knew where he was born. And yet, there's no record being said they went down to worship him. The message is very plain. As I'm preaching to you today, have you believed? Because if you have not believed, you can also miss his, his coming. You have already come. But it's coming again. Many people today who call themselves believers. What I notice is this. They are unbelieving believers. They read the word of God. But then again, they refuse to act upon it. You see, the Christian is very clearly plain, written for us. 
So we must listen very carefully. We must pay attention because it is very clear and plain. He said that the second of his coming might be the same thing that happened to those people in the first. It's going to happen to those who are living right now. The same reason they refuse to listen. They minister the spirit and they refuse the message of the scriptures. Now the third thing I want you to see that led this wise man is the miracle of the star. The miracle of the star is the Shekinah glory of God that are leading them step by step. You say, Brother Kingsley, when God appears to me in Shekinah glory, then I will follow him. It might not be so. When God performs miracle, he performs miracle in different many ways. If they kind of don't repeat the same thing, they start today. My God wants to remain safe to you. Might be through this message, might be to your family member or your friends or your colleagues or even your neighbors. You see, my dear friend, so I believe that God will reveal himself to anyone who is willing. You see, because that star did not appear to Herod, God does not reveal himself to rebel. There's no, there's no record that that star appeared to Herod. That star did not appear to those who refuse to honor God. The star appeared to the wise men because why? They are in their heart who are seeking God. Our brother James said that if, if we draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Not the other way around. If we draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Do you know why many criminals never find the police? They don't want to see the police. Why many people today don't find God? It's because they don't want to see God. Because God said, if you search me diligently with your heart, you will find me. So number one is how they sought him and they were wise. Number two is what they brought to him and that will make them very wise. You see, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 11, then opening their treasures and they offering him gifts, gold, frankincense, and men. That is not accidental. This is so fundamental. Why this specific three gifts being mentioned in the scripture? May I remind you that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. There's nothing that's in the scripture that is there for accident. Properly understood. It will make meaning, it will make a meaning to you. Because the first one they brought to him is God. And God speaks of his sovereign dominion. His sovereign dominion. Matthew chapter 2, verse 2 says, Where is he who has been born of what? King. King of Jews. And then in Matthew chapter 2, verse 6, And you, O Bethlehem, the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rest of Judea. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. It is so obvious. It's so obvious. How did they miss it? Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. It's so obvious beyond any qualification that these wise men knew that the child was a king. If you want to have the wisdom of Christmas, you are going to do the same thing. Understand what the wise man understood. That he is God. He is God and he is Lord. Amen. The Lord from the dead. He is the living God. And he said they brought God to him. And we know what this signifies. You know, as a king, the Bible speaks of ghosts, uh, uh, crowns of God. Daniel also knew that Jesus Christ would be the Messiah. The appointed prince in Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. As I prophesied, as I chapter 9, verse 7, that Messiah would be a king, and of the of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish upright with just with justice and righteousness from this time forth forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord of the host we do this, we perform this. Thou little baby say, King, you can never know. And you never will. Never, never know the meaning of Christmas until you cry him king. Have you done that? The angel said to Mary in Luke chapter 1 verse 33, And he will reign over the house of Jacob forevermore. And his kingdom will have no end. The same thing. His kingdom will have no end. You are dealing with sovereignty. When you are dealing with Jesus Christ, you are dealing with a king. He is the king of kings and he is the lord of lords. We didn't vote him in. And we can never vote him out, my dear friend. And we need to understand this because he's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our tribute. Even the earthly king, go to pray now. Don't go and go to her place to, to see her. You have to bring you have to bring a tribute. We pay tribute to the earthly kings and queens. And just quite say, render to King Caesar the things that are Caesar, unto God, the things that are God. Why do we pay tithes? 
we pay tax because the government demand it. If you don't pay tax, that means you're a dirty crook. But you can say, my dear friend, I want you to render to Jesus Christ the things that he deserves. I want you to remove that crown that is in your head and put it crown Jesus Christ as the King of Kings, as Lord of Lords, because the wise men do under they understood this. They put those gift to him. They pay tribute to him. And if you are not willing to pay tribute to Jesus Christ, if you are not willing to burden to worship him, every one of us have our own throne. And when Christ is on the throne, that means you're on the cross. And when you is in throne, Christ still may on the cross. You want Christ to come up on the cross and to be thrown over your life. And I want to put my flesh and my desires, everything upon that cross. And we have to recognize this, just as the wise men recognize that he is the sovereign dominion, that they know that he was born king of Jews. All right? Secondly, not only that they bring him God, but they brought to him frankincense. Now, frankincense speaks of his sinless deity. Not only that as a king, but my friend, he is God. He is God. Now, what does frankincense say? And what does frankincense have to do with this? Now, listen again, Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. They brought to him gift, gold and frankincense and mail. What is frankincense? Frankincense is one of the ingredients of the perf sweet perfume. Of worship that used in tabernacle and temple for one purpose, the worship of God. As a matter of fact, God said in Ezra chapter 30 verse 27 that it's not to be used only for other than the, to worship God, Almighty God. So they knew, therefore he's a king. They knew that he needed to be worshipped also as a God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, and going to the heart, they saw the child with the Mary, his mother, and they bowed down and they worship him. They bowed down and they worship him. If that child is not God and they worship him, that's blasphemy. That's the ultimate blasphemy that any man can worship to like a creation. That's adultery. Way back in Genesis chapter 20, verse 3, God said, You should not have another God before me. In, in the book of Revelation, the angel appeared to John. The angel was so handsome, was so glorious to the point where John fell his faith in his faith, want to worship him. Do you know that we are created to worship? Do you tell man is to worship God? And when you're not worshiping God, you're worshiping something else. Yes, John wants to worship the angel. The angel said, no, don't worship me, you worship God. Don't get me into trouble. Because the first one that was kicked off from heaven was Lucifer. He wants to be worshipped. You cannot worship one God. Don't have another God beside Jehovah God. So my dear friend, they knew. The Bible said they fell down and they worship him. What they were saying, not only like a sovereign uh, dominion, but they say he's a king. And not only like a king, he also is called. My dear friend, the message of the reason that needs to be preached in this age and in, in this day is the message of Christmas is for us to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sometimes Muslims will come and tell you they believe in Jesus. <laughs> they believe in Jesus. Or just as a prophet, but with Christians, we worship him because he's God. As any Christian, if they say Jesus Christ is not God, then that means I'm not a Christian. We worship him because he's God. You can say, Peace be upon him, that will save you. You can say, I, I respect him, that will save you. Until, until you worship him, my dear friend, you are not saved. Jesus Christ is God. Amen. So you can never know what Christmas is until you see him as the sovereign dominion. Until you see him as sinless deity. You say, what is this child is all about? Who is this child? Well, I let Isaiah answer that question. Because Isaiah says in chapter 9 verse 6, For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called. Wonderful counsel. Watch this. Mighty God. Mighty God and everlasting Father and the Prince of Priests. Thirdly, not only they bring to him God, and not only they bring to him frankincense, but totally they brought to him man. What is man? Well, Matthew chapter 2, verse 11 says, And going to their house, they saw the child uh, with uh, Mary's mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And then opening their treasures, and they offered him frankincense, uh, gift, gold, 
Five years says, Amen. Now, what is man? When Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, one of the things they offered to him was man. It's just a bitter herb or bitter leaf. They offered to him, the, the Mark chapter 15, uh, verse 23 says, and they offered to him wine mixed with man, but he did not take it. Do you like to drink wine? Jesus Christ did not take it. They offered to him wine with mixed with man, but he did not take it. And when they also used this to bury, the dead, you know, it's one of the spices they use. The bitter uh, spices, the uh, and, and, and embalmment they use to bury the dead was men. So it's so strange. It's so strange to give uh, a baby uh, something that is bitter and also something that is used to um, to to um, to, um, to embalm the dead. My dear friend, these wise men knew with precision what they were doing. I don't know. But I know one thing that God and the Spirit of God working the whole thing out. Because what a prophecy, like a prophecy, not only that he's sovereign uh, dominion, not only that he's a sinless deity, but his sacrificial death. Sacrificial death. They gave him man. This was a baby being born to die. They anticipated, they recognized his death upon the cross. Now today, most of us want to make much of Christmas. Everybody loves Christmas. I mean, we all love Christmas. We get together, we, we eat, we give presents. The light is so beautiful. We celebrate about the little baby. Tell me we cannot celebrate or get excited about the little baby being born. So we celebrate. But in the Bible, you can never find the area church. Celebrate Christmas. Don't get the idea that Christmas is wrong to celebrate. But the area church, they have memorial to be remember. Not the, not the, they don't remember the birth, but they remember the Lord's Supper. What is the Lord's Supper about? It's about the death of Jesus Christ. Now, the kind of, a kind of person we know to make much more of his birth, less than of his death, they love the candle, but they don't love the cross. Tomorrow night is um, Christmas Eve. Many people will wake up in the next day, even up to the Christmas and uh, New Year's Eve with a drunken somber. And yet, they don't see the baby as the sovereign king. And they don't see him as a sinless, as sinless deity. And they don't see him as the sacrificial savior who is going to die and he died on the cross for our sin. Have you worshipped him? Because the wisdom in this Christmas is to worship him. And I thank God for Christmas. And I thank God that this baby was born to die. This baby was born naked as a baby. And this baby, and, and he let her die as a man naked. Don't get the idea that the picture that you see, they put those lying cloth on him. Christ died naked. My dear Savior and your Savior died naked on the cross. Never lose sight of this Christmas, my dear friend. He died naked. Sometimes you see the picture of Jesus Christ being put in social media around the world. It looks like Jesus Christ just come out from for salon. That's not really Jesus Christ. He was frightened. He was pushed out of death. He came naked and he died naked. That is the way that we are serving. My dear friend, have you given your life to Jesus Christ? What's still holding you? Things of this world. You can take it with you. Just receive him right now. He died for you upon that cross. You say, I laid down my life and I can take it again. Like I said, and I keep on saying it. The new statistics of death is one top one dies. Every second is taken, someone dies. You say, it might not be you. I say, it might not be me. But at some point, we are going to die. The question is this. Is your life in Christ? Are you still the master of your of yourself, of your trade? Have you made Jesus Christ your Lord? The wise men, they know two things. The two points that you see this message, they sought him to worship him and they brought to him gift to pay tribute to him. It's the wisest thing that you can do in this Christmas. Seek him, worship him, and pay tribute to him. The man bless the mighty name of Jesus. My dear friends, Jesus Christ is Lord. Merry Christmas.